Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, good. I'm sitting right where I need to be. That's better. So I know, ladies and gentlemen, we're still working with the mic issues. I'm having to wear the headphones. I love them so much, though. 7.1 surround sound all in my head to drown out the whispers. You don't need to worry about what the whispers say. And yes, I will kill everyone. I mean, that's what the whispers are telling me. But ladies and gentlemen, tonight, it's of course a DCO podcast. We are at the end of April, the last day of the month. So that means we have to do a month roundup. Now, of course, during the halfway mark, we did talk a little bit about what? Well, the time capsules, which we'll touch upon uh, basically on tonight's episode. And But of course, you can go back to... You leave my fake. It's not fake. It's not fake. It's seven. There's like six over here, and then that point one, or that one point one's over here. That that's why this one's off. I have six over here, and the one point one is over here. Me, I also have an extra point one because I also always bring the boom, but it normally comes with a rage crash, which you know it's a side effect and it's a disease I have to live with. Be sure to go check your doctors. Even your nurses, too. Uh, but, of course, if you guys want a little more on the basic, the initial reaction on the Assassin Time Capsule stuff, be sure to head over to the YouTube channel or even here on Twitch and find the... I don't even know what episode number it is, but it's basically the halfway mark. But without further ado, I have a Coke. How's everyone doing? Hmm? Everyone doing okay? Looking at chat? Hmm? Yeah, flat soda. It's the best. It is the best. Uh, but as the point one is but in between the ear cups. Oh. I see what you got. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Uh, but as Crashpot has perfectly posted, tonight is the last day for the last day for the Warrior.org fundraiser. We are Hold on. I feel like one of these is off. There it is. Uh, so yeah, so we're a little under four hundred dollars. My goal was three hundred. We're basically a little under four hundred dollars to raise for Water.org, uh, delivering water to many families out there. Uh, so congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. That is so awesome. Uh, oh, Virginia's on in Ontario. Oh, I'm sorry, V. She's going through a rough time. And uh, many thoughts and prayers and all that stuff. You know, it's what what people do these times of days. But you know, big hugs, big internet hugs to Vagenda. Uh, and there's Curse dropping off the cheers. That's right. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can of course go over to the fundraiser page to directly donate. Use the tip function down below. It'll go straight to my PayPal. It'll go straight over to the to the uh, to war.org. Or you could cheer it up as Curse is blowing up my goddamn cup right now. Those are many. <clears throat> goddamn. All the heads. All the severed heads. You know, I'm surprised I don't get arrested by how many severed heads you people put in my cup. Thankfully for that. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get a roundup on what's been happening in DC Universe Online for the month of April. And click on this And Strange Brews. Thank you so much for the cheers. Fill up the cup, so Curse just drops it in there. And Curse is going to fill the cup more. So this is this is what happened. We're going to hear Larflees all night long, ladies and gentlemen. Larflees all night all night long, all night. I, hmm. I didn't mean to do that. It just it just comes out. It just does. Uh, and let me actually see what's going on here. Well, already 1,200... Is Curse really already trying to climb back up? Did, oh, the week did start back over. The week did. So, yeah. So, Curse right now is in the number one lead for uh, for Cheers. Until Wes wakes up from his nap. And he's going to come. Hooked on a feeling. Sorry. I don't know what's happening to me right now. It's really weird. Uh, but let's get into this. There's my mouse. So first things first to happen in the month of April, if you guys did miss it, I missed it a little bit, 
It is the Double Catalyst Weekend happening right there during on March, on April 12th. I know, April 12th was when we actually got it. I had to make sure. I looked and see there was nothing there. There was nothing there. But Double Catalyst Weekend gave everyone a chance to get some bonus, some bonus catalysts on all the content. What was especially awesome was during this period here. This weekend, in all those locations, you'll receive a double mount of Catalysts. Uh, additionally, daily instances in Episode 31, Deluge, will have a chance to drop a Catalyst, and weekly instances in Deluge will be guaranteed a drop of Catalyst. So this not only did players ha get the Catalyst that they need and a lot more of it during the content for that they were already playing, where it normally drops, but when you're also playing Episode 31, you had a chance of possibly getting the Catalyst, or in our raids, you had you always had a chance to get a catalyst. It's a random catalyst though. It's random. I don't really remember them doing a double catalyst or bonus catalyst weekend. You know, old age it happens like that. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen. But this was a very welcome thing. As everyone knows, when we're leveling up artifacts, catalyst is really the stopping point. It's really the wall that we find ourselves beaten down trying to get to. And yes, the marketplace is always there as an option to, hey, if you want to spend your money, get yourself your catalyst there, go for it, have fun, and it's there for a reason. But for a lot of us who rather just go for the grind, and, well, there's the grind, especially in instances that we don't really want to go into anymore. It's old stuff. We don't want to do that. But on how the catalyst is made available, we kind of have to have catalysts in the old content. And I understand why it's there. If this would have came out in year one and we were running that content left and right as we were leveling up, we would understand and it would be there. But when it came in like basically half, uh, wow, actually really late into its year as a new feature, it was more or less geared, leveled up to uh, better for newer players than for us veterans who had to go in there. It's the downside. It's the downside for sure. But Bonus Catalyst Weekends, I believe, was a big hit for uh, for DCUO. I know I was great. It was great to get some of the catalysts I was missing when I was running Episode 31 content. So thanks, devs. Thanks. Uh, we need another one. Let's go ahead. And, let's go ahead and wrap this up. I would even recommend. Shoot, you know, I was gonna recommend probably even a bonus Nymph Metal Weekend. But do we really need that? We already get a lot of nymph metal to begin with, and not to say, not so I just to say, I mean, we have our nymph metal detector that we can get from the marketplace as well, and it works out pretty well. It does. I mean, we also got a bunch of them <laughs> thanks to the booster bundles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still haven't used one. But, you know, even some extra nymph metal wouldn't hurt, especially now that we have three new artifacts that came into play. I think some Nymph Metal would rock it. League it. I don't know where I was going with that. Sorry. Mouse, work with me here. Next, that they was announced on April 18th was the Action Comics number 1000 and the celebration of Superman's 80th anniversary, which was actually not the Super... Which is really just a celebration. It's not the actual exact 80th anniversary, but you know, <laughs> details. We're the internet. We don't care about details. <laughs> oh, that guy. So, Superman's 80th celebration started off with a breaking news uh, for the nice little gift that we got that's, that really gives us the prologue going into the Death of Superman celebration. Yeah, this is cool. Uh, so, as a gift, we got this nice little newspaper dispenser. They call it a newspaper vendor. It's a newspaper dispenser. You know, it's what it is. The Daily Planet Vending Machine. Uh, so every player gets it. You only get one, so you have to really choose the character that you want to have it. And what this machine does is... It, well, it gives you the breaking news. It gives you the... This is basically, like I said, our prologue going into the Death of Superman stuff. Remember in week one, when we first got it, it was told that, hey, this meteor has struck down, and Superman had to go look at it, and he examined it A-OK. -okay. And now this week, for the second week, uh, the second week, it gave us that, hey, the pet of tomorrow, Crypto, is here, 
doing some stuff, and he's also available in the marketplace. Thanks for the plug, Lois. Thanks for the plug. But that's my goddamn job, and don't ever do it again. Yeah. But... Every week leading up to Death of Superman is going to have a breaking news. Now, the downside to this little machine is it doesn't really give him anything. Now, we're not sure what the next weeks are going to give. It just might just give us the backstory. It gives us a story. It's only a pro- it's a tool. It's a prop tool. That's all it is. It's just it's just there to give us the back the prologue to go on what's going uh, going into Death of Superman. That's it. That's, that's all. But it also gives a problem where it doesn't really give like an exclamation point telling us to remind us even. Like my, I had a buddy of mine remind me. It's like, hey, did you check out your newspaper dispenser? I'm like, oh, I haven't done that today. Let me go ahead and check that out. So even nice little like a green exclamation point or something else to say, hey, come read this. There's like something new. Or, you know, even have the flag up. Hmm? That's what it needs. It needs a red flag that's up. And then when we read it, it goes down. That would be awesome, right? Like, this nice little red flag. Everyone loves the red flag. We do. The Postal Service needs love, too, folks. That's what this is all about. Support your local Postal Service. Even though I'm definitely using UPS. Thanks, Brown. Thanks. So, that is basically the free gift that we got. Now, we're not sure what week the other weeks are going to be bringing about with it. So it's really just to wait and see what's going to happen. We could get something awesome. You never know. You never know. But uh, this is, of course, in celebration of Action Comics number 1,000th issue. And, of course, this is Superman's 80th anniversary, which will be coming up in, I want to say, June or July. June or July. Unless you're colorblind. Seuss! Okay, everyone loves the gray flag. The darkish ha- the darkish hazy gray flag. I support my I support y'all. I do. <laughs> uh but of course in the link for over on the forums you can definitely check out the free action comics one thousand preview that shows off the five page sto- uh to check out the first five pages. So you got a little something there. But that's the Superman is uh, they also had a live stream scheduled for Death of Superman. That, of course, we're going to be taking a look at in just a moment. Uh, but Death of Superman is on the test server as of right now. There's an update coming about that Jack, uh, Jack Frost has given us a little update saying that some things have been changing. And I'm waiting for those changes to come up to give a little bit more in-depth testing. Which, of course, you'll also find here on my Twitch channel. Twitch.tv slash Trexlight. Yeah! But if you haven't gotten your newspaper dispenser yet be sure to do so it's going to be in your redeem and claim vin- uh, window check it out next thing we have to talk about is the assassin time capsule i know i went a whole long time talking about this before and i'm gonna try my best to cut it short but as all my longtime viewers know i don't believe in short i just don't Everybody is long, in my opinion, just like my rants and my opinions. Long like a freight train. Yeah. You know, I actually, I just now noticed this. The core of the Owls guy is in the back. He's like, although he, he's right here, wearing the mask. I just now noticed that guy. Did, he literally probably could have shot me, and I was like, hey, who shot me? Was it Jackal? No, I didn't even see that guy. So... The Assassin Time Capsule, if you really want to get the long hoodoo about it, be sure to check over to the Halfway Podcast I, uh, that I posted before. Uh, I do believe in pants. Thanks for asking, Arwen. <laughs> so, the Assassin's Time Capsule. Yay, Time Capsule. New one came out. We were expecting it. So, in this time capsule, we have the gear is going to be based off of Black Manta. It is sick. It is so goddamn sick. It's nice. The cool, uh, they did change it up. This is a time capsule that they have done some new things with it. One of the new things that they did was with the gear. Okay, so we remember before, when we opened up a sub capsule with gear, you open up the gear box, you choose which type of gear you want, either support roll or your DPS. Once you, group, once you grab your gear, you'll now get your gear and also the enhanced plan that you, that you need to read to absorb in order to make the enhanced piece of gear. Well, this time they took away the enhanced plan. 
Instead, you have to collect all the pieces of the Manta gear, all eight pieces, get the feet, and once you pop that feet, you go to the Quarks vendor, and the Quarks vendor is going to have a box for, what was it, $8.99? Eight, uh, 899 Quarks? And you buy this box for, for the Quarks, and you get the entire set of enhanced gear. The entire set. That's it. And then you, boom, you pull it on, you look hotness. It really does look hot. The enhanced stuff, I mean, this is pictures. Like, this is normal. This is the enhanced, and it looked great. It looks really great. Jonesy West was wearing it, wearing the enhanced stuff, and he he, he looked great wearing it. It, it. He did some good color schemes. Good job. So they really did a, uh, a change here to see how the reactions would be if it's easier on us to not have a plan, to not waste materials, to not have to farm... F try and either buy them, buy these moats on the broker or buy the, or farm the hell out of them and pray for orange Jesus from the capsules. No. Which one's easier? Either the plans or the or using the quarks. For me personally, the quarks. Yes, I have an abundance of quarks, so I am a little biased, but it's much easier for quarks because at the same time I can use those materials for something else. Something else. I I please for something else. Next, uh, we, of course, have the regular collections as well. Uh, so we have three collections that we can get. One of them is going to be a cape that is not shown because it's all shadowy and mysterious. Ooh, wow, wow. It's all smoky and shit. So that's one of them. The other styles is what you see here in this picture. It is the jackal helmet and it is the court of owl's mask. Now, for the collections themselves, if you can, in case you don't know, uh, the collections that you have to complete in order to get them is Son of a Jackal, you get the Jackal Helmet, Owl Eyes, you get the Owl Mask, and in Tools of Slay, you get the Cape, in which apparently that Cape is really boss, and everyone wants it, and that Veal of Shadows is the... If you get the Veal of Shadows, ladies and gentlemen, it's the hot ticket item... It's the most expensive. Sell, sell, sell. Thank you, Wes, by the way, for giving that to me. That really meant a lot, and I did definitely use that. Thank you. And I think everybody got some cool points from it. But sell, sell, sell. Next, it was, again, this artifact, this ca this Assassin's Capsule, was a lot of new things. It's a little bit of changes. So in this capsule, instead of having emblems, which I know, we're all sad we don't have 12,000 emblems to collect and then have to make the enhanced version of it. I know, we're all sad. No, I'm okay. So what they instead did was they changed it up and with, took emblems out of, out of here and instead gave us the Assassin Artifi Ar Artificer's Capsule. Artificer's. Ar it's just calling it the Artifact Capsule. I'm never going to get that name right, and I don't care what my linguistic teacher tells me. Shut up, Hila. I do not care. So, with the artifact capsule. Uh, so, with the artifact capsule here, it's something different. What this is, is an art is three artifacts locked behind a time capsule. I know, I know, but hold on. Give me a moment, give me a moment. I've already given my initial rage on this to begin with, Okay. My initial rage, I've already given it. But let's, let's look at what we have to do here, okay? So in order to get your artifacts quest going, uh, they tied it into a time capsule. All you really have to do is add in a... Uh, all you have to do is open a artifact capsule. It's a sub-capsule. All you have to do is just get one. Now, there are a lot of players out there who have had the RNG, the non-RNG luck of having to not... I mean, I got mine in my third. Some people got there in their eighth and sixth. It's like it's different ones because it's all RNG. But you just have to open them and just start your quest. Now, do you understand? That, and I'm making sure I'm pointing this out because as long as much as these got a, little bit, a lot of hate, and I even gave a little hate of it as well, it's not that difficult. You do not have to spend money to open a time capsule. I want to repeat myself. You do not have to spend money to open a time capsule. We have it in the game. You can run your stabilizer event every five, th four, or three days. You can open up a time capsule. And pray to RNG that you can get a Assassin's Time. 
you get an artifact capsule. You get the artifact sub capsule, you open it up for the first time, and you get an email in game from Nicolas Cage. Yeah, I know. I couldn't believe they got Nicolas Cage either. We can't get Mark Hamill, we got Nicolas Cage. We got the new Superman. It's great. So great. But he gives you an item called the Eyes of Dust. This is a style item that you have to wear. Now, you have to wear this, the Eyes of Dusk in order to collect the collections that you, uh, in order to make the artifacts. It, it takes 10 collection pieces to make the artifacts. Okay, so basically, 10 days. In those 10 days, you have to wear the, you have to wear the eyes in order to see the collections. And I say 10 days because you only get a collection item once a day for all three. So, or for each three. So you basically get three collections a day, 10 days, you can make all three artifacts. So what they did here was they brought a little story element to it. They brought a little story element. It's like, hey, here's a message from Nicolas Cage. Here's your eyes. Go out there and basically make your artifact. I'm completely okay with having a quest around my artifacts because it makes it gives it a little more immersion to have to with these artifacts instead of going, hey, Johnson Teen has, some, has a new supply. Okay, let me go talk to this limey bastard and I'll go get some new artifacts. It's great. But they brought in a little story element to it and of course it's got mis mixed reactions out there because oh, I got to wear this ugly style and all oh, the collections aren't dropping all the time and it's a little bit of a grind. It's, like it, it's a work in progress. Like I said, the Assassin Time Capsule is all about something New approach. It's a new approach to the gear. It's a new approach to the artifacts. And trust me, the developers are definitely listening to the feedback. And I think at this point, yes, everyone doesn't like artifacts behind time capsules. I'm one of those as well. We've given that. We've given that feedback. It is beating a dead horse. The developers know not to do this again. But the, the feedback we probably need to give now is how well was this execution. How was this execution with giving artifacts a story? How will we give that kind of feedback? It's like, no, but we still hate it. I understand you hate it. It's an artifact that's technically an actual item that we need in-game to strengthen our characters. I get that. I do. It's a bad idea. It was a bad move. But how about the story element? How about that? So... In my opinion, the story element was pretty much a hit. I definitely enjoy it. I did. I am sad. I am pissed at myself because I missed a couple of days. So I am a little bit behind. Everybody's gotten their ten, uh, ten days are up. They got their artifacts going, and I'm over here two, maybe three days behind. Darn, darn. But at the same time, it's only ten days. It's not like it's a big race to figure out who's going to get to the 120 on the artifact first. It's not a race. It's just you have it right here. You have it behind. The, you have it here. You have eight weeks to try and at least get the eyes. That's it. You have it there. Oh, Raph is behind as well. Oh, that sucks. I I took the weekend off. I did this to myself. Yeah. So what are these actual artifacts that we're looking at? Okay. Well, the artifacts are simple. First um first one is the Venom Wrist Dispenser. Uh, Venom Surge is the buff. Uh, and they're only showing the rank 80. There is a rank 20 as well. Uh, so using the weapon buff, the ability, it increases your precision by 35% and reduces your base power regeneration by 10% for 6 seconds. 120 definitely has a little bit of a extra buff to it, I believe. Uh, the Demon's Fang. Demons bite every 12 seconds. Hitting an enemy with a weapon attack empowers your weapon. While empowered... Your next six weapon attacks deal additional damage to your primary target equal to 5% at rank 80 of your restoration and restore power equal to 1.4% at rank 80 of your restoration. This is a pretty awesome heal uh, for healers. This is a pretty awesome artifact for those healers who are wanting to be a little more active, wanting to be those battle healers. And, but this also works for other DPS players as well because even as DPS, we still have a little bit of restoration. Even think about it, I mean, you could even probably, I mean, you, you spec out and you put all your points into into precision. What are you going to do, put points in health? Yeah, you could, or you could put points in restoration for this little guy. Yeah, it's a little theory crafting. It's all good. It's all good. And then last but not least, the one that's for tanks and probably for everybody else, but tanks, we, we need this. Uh, for Lazarus Water, especially me. Uh, revive. You can instantly revive yourself anytime you are able to be rallied. You must wait 12 hours at rank 80 
rank uh, at rank 120. It's four every four hours before using this ability again. Now the time for that for the hours long thing it definitely could be adjusted in my opinion, maybe a little less, but not something that's completely over over the top. But you never know. I believe there's going to be probably more ranks after 120, so it could get better. Or it could get worse. But it could get better. It could get worse. Come on, Optimism. Work with me. Yeah. So that's the Assassin's Time Capsule. Of course, inside you get Nymph Metal, you get Exobites, you get Soracola Ultimates. Uh, yeah, you just get a bunch of other, you know, the normal stuff. And Quarks. Don't forget Quarks. So it just works like a, a normal one. So we, if you've already been here before the previous podcast and you've already watched it on YouTube, not right now as of this recording, but you all remember my initial reaction. It sucks. It shouldn't. The artifact should not have been part of a time capsule. At the same time, this is the only now time capsule, and this is what hurts the. This is what hurts the argument right now. Every time capsule can be opened and can be traded. I can give it away to anyone I want to on stream, soon to be Discord, and I could just throw it away. It's like, your whole argument is like, I have to open these. No, you don't. Why? Because Trex gives all them away. Ha-da! Jazz hands. I give them all away, but this is the first time capsule out of now, what, nine? This is our tenth one? Yeah, this is our tenth one. Number ten had to be the Ruiner. Because the artifact subcapsule here cannot be traded. It cannot be given to anyone besides... I mean, when you have the subcapsule, it's account bound. You can give it to your alts, but you cannot give it to another player. The sin stones that are inside the subcapsules, which these are the new these are the new Nymph Metal artifact XP items. These sin stones get work just like other Artifact XP, they give it to you. They can work in the old artifacts as well, and it's an extra thing to help level you up. I can't wait to use them. But the Sin Stones ha- actually give an extra 10% XP if they're used within the three new artifacts here. So, hmm, it's kind of nice. But the problem is, I cannot trade, I cannot broker these Sin Stones. And that was a miss. There are people out there who open up a time capsules, are stuck with these sin stones, and they don't want them, so they have to destroy them. That is a profit that these folks are having to destroy. They're having to destroy them, and that is not cool. I really do hope before these are actually gone, within the eight weeks, that they could try and make a hotfix and allow the Sin Stones to be tradable. Allow the Sin Stones to be on the broker. FYI, ladies and gentlemen, I am not fucking getting rid of my Sin Stones. Uh, they are mine and mine to keep. I love you guys. You can get gear. You can get collections. You can get auras. I'm not getting up my Sin Stones. Those are mine. Mine alone. I'm just speaking for everybody else, not for me. I'm okay with my Sin Stone being on me. But it's just the purpose <laughs> that I cannot trade them. I'm pretty sure players would just give me the Sin Stones, and at that point, it becomes... They're mine. They are absolutely mine. They're all mine. I'm not giving them... Mine! They're all mine. (laughs) Off track. Off track. But anyways, that was the big... That was the biggest hit uh, miss for me. Because I can't say that every time capsule is tradable. All the things inside can be tradable. Because the Sin Stones now hurt the argument. Now, to be fair, on the level of seriousness... Sorry, I want to make sure I'm in frame. In the level of seriousness, Sin Stones are meh. Meh. I mean, everyone can technically use them. Even if you're a person who's not leveling up your artifacts, if you're destroying Nymph Metal, then you're destroying Sin Stones. And I mean, life goes on with... Life goes on. You can be mad because you're like, oh, I have no use for these. Cool. I really don't have a use for emblems. There you go. I I just don't have a use. But they have feats. Eh, fuck it. I don't need them. I don't care. I can just play content and get my feats. I'm, durr. I don't need styles for an item that I don't care about because I'm not going to use. You're, and you still need these, the Nymph Metal. You still need these Sin Stones to level up an artifact. Because guess what? Those artifacts have feats as well. 
True, these three only come out level rank 20. That's it. They do have feats. The feats here are at rank 20. That's it. There's no rank 40 to level it up. Okay? FYI. But as Dave uh, Magician points out here in chat as well, you're welcome for the back piece, that there is also a new marketplace item coming from the idea from the mega capsules that we have during the resurgency. You can actually get the unlocked assassin capsules from the marketplace. And they cost the same as a as one stabilizer key at 90 daybreak cash or 100, depending on if you're a member or not, be a member. So you can either go out there and buy a key to open up an assassin sign castle that's dropped for you, or you can just go straight to the marketplace and spend that 90 and bammo just straight up buy the assassin time castle unlocked. Either way, you're spending the same amount of money. You're just opening either one that you get from a drop or one that you can just open up from the marketplace. It's either or. It's a win for you. As a person who wants to open time capsules up on day one without having to farm, this was an amazing thing. And I hope the developers continue it on because it does. Because I want to do giveaways on day one, but I have to go out and farm or players are nice enough to send me the time capsules. I open them and I give them away. But using the marketplace option was just a great idea. And I thank the developers for that. And my chat uh, thanks them as well because they are definitely loving the giveaways. Don't you? Say yes. <laughs> so, what else was there? So, also, we also had that fear with the artifacts here of having to take the subcapsules to your alts. Well, since the initial video talking about them, and again, I'm not happy that they're part of the time capsule. I will make sure to repeat myself. Even though as optimistic as I'm sounding, and it definitely sounds like it's a pretty cool thing, it is a cool thing. But I'm still saying, artifacts do not need to be tied, tied to time capsules. Tie them up to an episode. I am okay tying them to an episode. Give it a story element. Muy bueno. So great. Awesome idea. Put them to a time capsule? No. As easy as it is to complete this, I'm still saying no artifacts to time capsules. But since the initial video with the initial reaction, we have learned a few things as well. And it's to the point of, could the developers have told us? Yes. But is it cool that the players found this out themselves? A little bit. I mean, we, don't, we really don't need everything handed to us. And true, a lot of this information probably could have tied over a lot of hate and also probably could have saved a lot of money. But to be fair, that's honestly a gamble that developers and even us as players are going to have to do but let's talk about some of the things that we learned now that we're actually like a week or two into these time capsules so for your alts if your main has already gotten the eyes of dusk if you've already gotten the eyes of dusk all you have to do is go to your alt the eyes of Sha eyes of the shadows feet unlock it when you unlock that feet the eyes of dusk will be in the mail from Nicolas Cage Okay, you'll automatically get the Eyes of Dusk will already be there and you can go out and journey on. This will also mean that even if you miss out on the Assassin's Time Capsules, as long as your one character on your account has it, has that feat, has the eyes, you can unlock them on your alts at your own leisure. Tally forth. This is also one of the reasons why I wish that the Sin Stones were definitely tradable so we can put them on the broker at a later time, because, you know, we want to make some money in this broken economy that we broke. Or at least the cheaters broke. Eh. So there are some th so there are some good things to it. True, we could have definitely learned a little about the alts from the developers, but I think as players were progressing and they found this out, it definitely allowed to allow some of the hate to tie down a little bit and honestly if you go to the forums if you don't if you still are a little confused here with how the subcapsules work please 
Go on to the forums. Magneto First Class did a fantastic write-up on the Gotham City general chat. Someone can probably link that in chat. That would be fantastic. So at least folks on the video on the YouTube can at least see the link. But Magneto did a fantastic job writing down a breakdown of how step-by-step -step to open up the subcapsule and start your artifact journey. I honestly wish right about now I took the time to write down each of the collections so if we at least have a list, even though it's just some random ass drops. But it could take you five minutes. It could take you an hour to get your three collections. It is what it is. Oh, that's right. That was another thing. Arwen, thank you so much. The artifacts feat is unlockable too. So when you spend the ten days to unlock your artifact on your ma on that one character, you can unlock the actual artifact feat, and that artifact will get to your to will get to your alt as well. So in in honestly. You just really just need to do ten days on one character, get your three, get your artifacts, and then just get your alts and unlock the feet. So you can either unlock the feet to get your eyes of dusk, which some styles out there really go well with it. So you can get that style, but then or you can just wait until your main character or a character gets the three artifacts, and then just spend your three feet unlocks and go ahead and get your artifacts for free. So still. You only really need to open up enough time capsules, enough assassin time capsules, to get your first artifact subcapsule. When you open up your first one, you get your eyes of dusk, and thus begin your journey for 10 days. And after that 10 days, you can unlock the feat to get your artifacts for your alts. It's either or. So there you go. Thank you, Aaron, for that reminder. But again... Assassin's Time Capsule was really a a trial run to see how this goes. It was a trial for the gear. It was a trial for... Ah, uh, thank you, Tricky, for the subscription. I saw it the other day, by the way, too. I just... Apparently, I missed it. I don't know what happened to it. But thanks for the subscription, buddy. Arr. Welcome to the party. So, the Assassin's Time Capsule really was a trial at this point. So we have a new method to get the enhanced gear. Whether it goes into the next time capsule, I don't know. We can only hope. And hopefully folks have been giving some feedback on that, saying how they feel, whether they like to do the making the enhanced gear, or do they like just buying it from the corks. And I probably still need to actually update my corks vendor guide. I really need to do that. Uh, and then collections, still the same. Got some nice little head pieces. Uh, and then the artifact time capsule. The artifact subcapsule, sorry. That was a new method as well. And again, I stress it. Artifacts in Time Capsule, no bueno. It's easy. It's really easy. I, I'm not in... I have to keep stressing it. It is super fucking easy to start your artifact quest by just casually open art Time Capsules. But again, just the fact that it's behind that wall... It's that's a that's a no to me. That's a big no. But having a time having an artifact tied in with a quest line, love the idea. Absolutely love it. The execution of the story progressing for it was great. Having Nicolas Cage email us, having having to actually go out and farm for it, even though some of the does seem kind of weird for 10 days, but you know, a farm is a farm. It's what MMOs are supposed to do. They're supposed to actually make us grind. So if you don't like to grind, don't play fucking MMOs. But I'd rather have that kind of mythology, that kind of mechanic, within an actual episode, not a time capsule. So, episode 32, episode 33, new time, new artifacts you want to introduce? Do it in an episode. Definitely do it in an episode. Uh, the only thing I can really say uh, as well with this time capsule, and hopefully again, please, if you can get this done, either like even after the eight weeks or even during the eight weeks that this time capsule is alive... Make the sin stones tradable. That is the only thing, but that's literally the only thing besmirching the good name <laughs> of time capsules against the argument that everyone can get them. Everyone can trade everything. Time the sin stones, the artifact subcapsule is literally actually hurting you. It's hurting the case that everything can be tradable. Just make the sin stones tradable, make them be on the broker, and we're good. And we're good. Everyone will be selling like hotcakes. They'll just be out there. It'll be great. It'll be a grand old time. Uh, so, yeah. So, okay. So, enough of that. 
enough of that. If you again, if you want the initial reaction from it from me about this, definitely look at the last podcast. It's there for a reason. So we got a development update. Yeah, I know. It's pretty sexy, right? It is pretty sexy. So they gave us an update with Game Update 82. We'll be launching Style Unlocking. Mm, mm, mm. We've all talked about this. We've all been wanting this for the past two years. And it's so happy that it's finally here. So with Style Unlocking, it works just like Feet Unlocking. You spend some replays and you unlock some styles. When you unlock the styles from Style Unlocking, you will get the feet. But if you unlock the feet, you will not get the style. That's not how that works. So here you can see a little bit of a preview on what these styles kind of cost. Uh, so you can see that the enhanced gear seems to be free. Uh, Ages of Az uh, Azerus, Avatar of Ophidian, looks like these are in the House of Valley's like some tier 1 stuff. They seem to be in the 4, very cheap range. Future Crusader is a time capsule gear. Uh, gear style, so that was 22 replays. Um, I wonder if these actually changed a little bit, I'm not sure, but I know a lot of the booster bundle auras from booster bundles 1 through 3, uh, the, you know, the, the rare ones, uh, they are like 350, and then like that ultra rare, like the Nimbus aura and all them, those are right there are 525. Now, the style unlocking definitely had a sticker shock value to it. I mean, 350 replay badges, that's 10 bucks on the marketplace. You're spending 10 bucks to unlock a style that you've already spent Buku's worth of money on. Okay, and? I mean, it's either you can spend the 10 bucks to unlock it on all your characters. I mean, we have 10 bucks on each character. Or you could just sit, have it sit there on a character and be sitting in your pity potty. I'll let me tell you. I mean, again, the sticker shock was real, but it's not that bad. I mean, everybody is already is always saying that we can have these auras, we can have these, all this stuff on the marketplace for ten, fifteen dollars. But as soon as you see a ten dollar price tag on an aura, you flip the fuck out. Like you can't have it both ways. You just, you just can't. So, and true, that's 10 bucks on Marketplace that you spend 10 bucks on Aura and unlocks on all your tunes. Here, to, here is a little bit more of a price gouge, a little bit, not going to say, not going to lie, not going to lie. I mean, you spend 300, 350 replay badges, that's 10 bucks to unlock an Aura on that one tune. You got to go to another tune and spend another 10 bucks. All I have to say is be an adult or have an adult and spend your money wisely. Go out and mow some more lawns. Mow those lawns. So, with style unlocking, they can't do all the styles all at once. If they did it all at once, I'm most likely thinking that we probably still won't see this bad boy for like another year or so. Or however how long. So, what they decided to do is still give it to us, but they gave it to us in what in phases. So, in phase one, they gave us tier one. They gave us episodes one through 26 styles. They gave us the vendor styles. Uh, they gave us uh, the Time Capsules 1 through 3, Booster Bundle 1 through 3, and I think a couple of other things. But this is all going to be in phases. So PvP styles are not part of it yet. Weapon styles are not part of it yet. I mean, we're still, we're, we're still missing stuff. Even the original Drop Gear styles. Those original Drop Gear styles, even I thought was going to be part of it. They're not part of this. <laughs> They are not yet. Again, it's going to be in different phases coming in the future game updates. So hopefully in the next months, in every single game update, we are going to see updates to the style unlocking, adding more styles into it until every style in the game is part of this feature. So style unlocking is finally here. We, not, we might not be able to get all the styles that we want, and but I'm pretty sure the developers are looking at all the feedback and they are possibly even looking at the prices. I mean developers have shocked us before and changed prices on things. So could the style unlocking prices drop down? I'm not gonna say no, I'm not gonna say never. It's a possibility. 
but it's always up to the discretion of the developers, and they may or may not. It's not their whim, and they may or may not. That's all I can say. Do I think that the prices should drop? No, I think they're pretty good. I mean, I, I do think that actually they're they're pretty good. I mean, even my corrupted aura is I can buy. I think it was like three fifty, and I'm like, yeah, I'll drop ten bucks. <laughs> Done. I'll drop it. I'll drop it like it's hot. But I also have an abundance of replays as well because you know, <laughs> being a member and all, and being irresponsible with my money, I made sure to spend myself a lot of uh, replay badges, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and also, thank you to the booster bundles for supplying me with. A lot of replays as well. They're always there. They're always there. Thanks. So I hope you guys are enjoying Stein Unlocking. There's been a lot of pictures on Twitter, a lot of pictures on, on the forums, showing every, everybody showing off their different styles for thanks to Stein Unlocking. Heroes wearing villain gear. Villain wearing villain gear because they know better not to wear hero stuff. And it's worked out. I think the community has definitely been, has been liking it just a lot more. So, can't wait to see what the next game update uh, will bring for styles. Everybody really wants PvP styles. Everybody really wants weapon styles. I want weapon styles too. So, cannot wait to see what it brings about. And of course, we're going to talk about the hotfix in just a little, or the game update in uh, just a little bit. So, development update. Death of Superman Part 1. Like I said, it has officially hit the test server. Still, We're a couple weeks into it. We found a few bugs trying to stop Doomsday. It's been bugging out a little bit. So, But uh, the testers are doing a fantastic job looking at it. So, uh, basically, this is how we're celebrating the 80th anniversary with content. Now, Death of Superman is going to be permanent content. It's not an episode. It's in the episode feat listing, but it's not an episode. It's going to be for free for everyone. You don't have to spend money on it. It's going to be a free for el for everybody, gear for everybody. Or actually, no, it's probably just going to be styles for everybody. Uh, the style that's going to be with Death of Superman is going to be the Lobo style. Looks pretty hot. Looks pretty hot. Uh, so, what's going on is Doomsday has attacked, is attacking Metropolis. Superman is trying his best to distract him. LexCorp and Wayne's Enterprises are working to rebuild Metropolis. Uh, so this is an updated Metropolis. Daily Planet is unbottled. You can go over to Daily Planet Globe and take some pictures. Like, ha ha, I'm here. Doomsday, get out of the shot. You're in the shot. Ha. Hmm. Press your lips. Okay. <laughs> uh, so... Deaths of Superman Part 1 is basically filled with a lot of open-world content. We have new open-world content. We have a new mark system that we have to get called Tributes. Uh, that's what you use to buy the Lobo gear. And also some base items as well. So we'll have dailies and we'll have weeklies out there for everyone to do. Uh, there's even one including to Stop Doomsday, which is basically just getting down to 90%. But it's not like you can go out there by yourself. It's like, all right, Doomsday, let's do this. Pachoo, 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 pachoo. Nope, it's going to be pachoo, 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 crunch. That's what it's going to be. So, on test server, we have a small population of testers. So, I mean, it's not like everybody's actually going out there to fight Doomsday. But when it's live servers, you think that the Star Wars thing is bad? <laughs> Wait till you see this guy. Everybody's going to be going to that motherfucker. But you only have to get him down to 90%, and then he'll disappear. And then, like... 12 seconds later, he reappears because that's what he is. He's a roaming boss. He will be walking around the entire map. And the map itself is pretty small. But the, uh, the testers are doing some, giving some fantastic feedback to help it out because where it is currently right now, if live server players came into it, uh, there wouldn't be a lot of nodes to really snatch up. It's it, There needs to be a lot more mobs. But of course, it could be... Uh, the, I think the area might get larger as we progress into more Death of Superman stuff. But also understand when you look at the vendor and you look at the prices. When you look at the vendor and you look at the prices for that for those styles, and that's all ge that's all styles. It's not gear. It's all styles. And there's some base item uh, bundle boxes in there as well. So what you're looking at is those prices, uh, those prices, and you're looking at the open world content. That's just part one. When Part 2 and 3 come out in June, you're looking at more content, meaning more tributes, meaning uh, you're going to have a lot more to spend on that vendor. So it's not going to be just 
at part one is going to have this amount of tributes, and here's the gear you can only buy for. Part two comes out. Here's the amount of different tributes, and you get to buy different stuff. No. It's all going to be same tribute, uh, same tribute tokens. I can only guess, but that's how I'm seeing it. It's going to be all the same tributes. Costs aren't really going to say. I don't really th see what they can really add to the vendor. But, I mean, if they add more, cool. I mean, that's awesome. I'm not going to say no, but we'll have more content coming out in Part 2 and 3 coming in June. Part 1, as announced on DC's on DC Comics' YouTube channel, Destiny Man Part 1, coming out May 16th. So you guys have a little bit about two weeks left. Two weeks. Let's get it going! Let's get it going. More testing will be coming about uh, once we get the new, some new patch notes coming out, so... Stay tuned for that. Go April 26th. So the technically Game Update 82 is, in my opinion, still the May Game Update. But Game Update 82 came out in April, so, you know, whatever you're going to do. So, like I said, Style Unlocking has come out. Have at thee. All you have to do is just log on and every first time. You have to log in on all your tunes so the system recognizes all the styles that your whole account has. And you can go to your character and spend the replays as much as you want. Now, this is cross-faction, but it is not cross-server. So an EU, per so your EU tune who has a style will not be unlockable on your US tune. They have to be in the same region. All right, same region, same account. Actually, I say that, but I believe that you can still actually do. That's with PlayStation, PC. US PC and EU PC, because it's the same account, they can do that. They can cross server their styles. P, uh, PlayStation players and Xbox players, they cannot. Sorry, consoles. Hashtag PC Master Race. Um, there's something else. Oh, okay, so uh, this is basically the patch notes for Game of the 82. They did some changes with the Promethium lockboxes. It's pretty cool. Promethium lockboxes will drop now more frequently. I mean, with style unlocking, we kind of really hurt the Promethium lockbox sales, right? I mean, we can unlock all those styles. We don't really need this anymore. But you know. Uh, so free and premium players will now receive a lockbox uh, between one and four hours of gameplay. And members will receive a lockbox between one and two hours of gameplay. So the Promethium lockboxes will be dropping much faster. The price for keys have also been reduced as well. Members, we can still open them for free because it's part of our membership perk. Yay. Now, also, as a test to see how this goes, because operations, they're not cross-faction because of issues, especially when we're traveling through open world, it could confuse the system. But Earth 3, the visitor, is a test to that system to see how it works. So the Earth 3, the visitor duo, is now cross-faction. Please, during the visitor, give as much feedback as possible and any notes that you can see to how to improve it, any issues that you have seen it as a hero or as a villain, cross-faction it up, up a storm, figure out what's going on. Uh, and then some random... Fixes here as well. Uh, salvaging the abysmal gear no longer grants an essence. Well, that's a shame. That's a shame. It should at least grant us the oceanic guys. That's sad. Sad. But, just some fixes coming from that, so... There's that. Next, this past weekend, as of this recording... we ju uh, So today, on Monday, as we're here... The Bonus Atlantean Crowns. Today, as you're listening to this podcast live, this is the last day. So you get in the game, get your get your runs in, get your Bonus Atlantean Crowns, go out there and have at the. Go out there and go out and just collect. Collect it up a storm. Hell, I, I actually spent replay badges in the, uh, in the raids this weekend on Friday when I was playing it. Because, yeah, I wanted, I wanted 16. Technically 18 because, you know, I have a sorry, not sorry feat from last year in Stara, so I actually get an extra mark. So because I get the extra mark, it still works in with the bonus, so actually instead of getting 16, I actually get 18. So it's like, it's great. So because of Thursday on the 26th when Game of the 82 was being placed, uh, the U.S. side, we did hit a snag because 
of some hardware issues. So the developers were nice enough to extend the weekend all the way through Monday. So the bonus crown does end at 7 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday morning uh, on the daily reset. So again, tonight, as I was recording, is your last night to get your bonus crowns in. Go out there and have fun, guys. Then last but not least, just checking up on the current and upcoming events and content for DCO, just so you, you guys can see what is coming about. So right now, episode 31 is still going on, uh, launched in March. Uh, it seems to be actually doing pretty well. Loving, uh, Really liking seeing the styles that are coming about, and everyone's really enjoying it. Uh, we got the breaking news April 8, on April 18th. We got the nice little vendor. Assassin Time Castles came out on the 19th. Bonus Lantern Crowns Weekend. Cool. Death of Superman Part 1 launching May 16th. Spring event. Oh, shit. Oh, fudge. Oh, the spring event starts tomorrow. Oh, I'm not prepared. I have... I, I have to get I have to get my heat my heel I have to get my nature tune prepared. My nature tune's not prepared. I haven't cleared my inventory. I never do. And I just so spring event starts tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Uh if you want to see any of the styles that the spring event is coming about, please head over to youtube.com slash Tori Kumu. Someone can link that in chat. That would be great, even though no one's really linking anything, and that's okay because I don't understand you guys don't love me. But Tori Kumu has a bunch of the styles shown off on his YouTube channel because that's what Tori does. He likes to play dress up, and I like it when he does. Hashtag no homo. <laughs> uh, all the homo. And Death of Superman Part 2 and 3 will be launching in June. So I think when Death of Superman Part 1 launches on May 16th, we're probably going to go ahead and get Death Superman Part 2 on the test server on that same week. So prepare yourselves for more of that. And hopefully we get to see some more items too. It'll be really great. It'll be really great. So uh, I'm going to have to end this on a little bit of a sour note. It's kind of a sour. But so for the past week or so, we've seen Daybreak uh, in the news uh, talking about the, well, honestly, it's actually been Columbus Nova in the news because of some government shit going on there. What? Hey, look, I'm just here to play a video game. I'm just here to play a video game. Just let me play my video game and I'm done. Uh, but anyways, they are... Columbus Nova is basically getting pitching, is getting in trouble with the U.S. government over some stuff because of being tied to Russia and all that stuff. Cause, you know, being tied to Russia is the cool thing to do in 2018. It's so great. So, of course, that's coming down on to Daybreak, because Daybreak Games, as we remember in 2015, it was told that Columbus Nova bought Daybreak Games. We we knew this from 2015. Well, apparently, it found out that, uh, well, actually, it's not like that. It's Jason, Jason Epstein, who is the current president of uh, Daybreak Games. He actually bought Daybreak, not Columbus Nova. It's been a misnomer for this past three years that we're now finally clean, uh, cleaning up. But it all start, it all steamed from the EverQuest community over on their forums that this all broke out, and it came over here to Daybreak, uh, to DCO. It might have came over to the H1Z1 forums, but I'm not sure about those people. They, I don't know. I don't visit those forums. Sorry. I remember when you were, I remember when you used to be a zombie game I remember. So, with everything going on, the Meps uh, made a po brought up this post. I'm pretty sure it was copied from the uh, from over there. It came it came to H1Z1. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Meps posted here regarding the Daybreak ownership, saying that Jason Epstein, longtime investor, uh, he actually acquired in two in February 2015, not Columbus Nova, and he's been the He's been the head honcho ever since. Um, they are they're trying their best to clean it up on uh, by giving us this announcement to try and make sure to ease the players' minds. But of course, this is the age of the internet. We believe in crackpot theories and conspiracy theories, and because they're big brother, big brother is lying. While well, we always have to listen to each other. We have to listen to ourselves. We like if you're not talking crazy, if you don't believe in the conspiracy, then you're part of the problem. 
that's basically what's happening right here. Now, I do believe that the past three years, I've always believed it's been Club and Snova, and apparently it's been Jason Nepstein. It's like, oh, well, I guess I what I mean, I do find it a little eh, but I'm like, okay, well, then Jason's been the head on show. One, I don't fucking work for the company, so I don't care. All I need to know is, are the doors for DCUO still open? They are? Cool. Going out there and playing. It's all that really matters to me. It, And, of course, being the news outlets, journalists are doing their journalist thing, and they're going through all these reports. I saw some guy on Twitter literally file diving into everything at Daybreak is going on just to try to find something. And, I, I mean, you're doing your job. You're doing your job, man. Can't really, help, can't really hurt you there. Can't really hate you there. I mean, I can't do it. Um, but also, we got a note from the executive producer, Ketnikov. I probably shouldn't have actually said it in that accent, but you know, it's a good name. I like her name. Uh, so, and this is actually regarding, because when we had the breaking news about, well, breaking news, when we had the news about Daybreak's ownership, if it was Columbus Nova, it's like, oh, this is going to hurt the Daybreak games, and it's like, no, Jason Epstein's been the head on the show, everything's fine. We found out that the chief publishing officer, uh, I think it's a she, she was, she was let go or resigned, I don't know, she's no longer working there. And then we had H1Z1 layoffs, which are just layoffs in Daybreak in general. It completely sucks. Some people that I really enjoy from Daybreak, they got hit. Much heart to you guys, and I hope you guys lay on your feet and find something that you enjoy. I'm telling you now, whatever gaming community gets some of these people, even gets all of them, that community is going to be much more brighter because they are amazing people. Miss you, Roshan. Miss you, buddy. So, it honestly has just been a really big roller coaster of... It's just been bad timing to do all this stuff, you know? Being in the news like this and just bad timing coming about. So, but Katnikov wanted to come on here and let us know that DCI was good. Even EverQuest got the same notion. EverQuest is good as well. H1Z1 probably got the same notification as well. And But uh, they're saying that DCO is great. We're okay. We're good. Nothing's hurting the development schedule. Saying to lose, surpass expectations. And also, there's two more episodes in the works. Okay, so um, let, let's go on about this. What's, um, what's these two episodes, Cap? Come on, what you got? Uh, okay, cool, cool. Daybreak is okay. We don't care. They have an owner, blah, 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 blah. Let's talk about these two episodes, madam. Hmm? What you got? Episode 32 is more Atlantean? Hmm? You gonna give us more Atlantean? You gonna continue the story? We're gonna have to wait? At least give us episode 33. I can't wait. I, I don't want to wait to finish off another episode like we did with, uh, the, tril- with, the, with the trilogy series. I don't want to wait like that. I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait. For our lives to be over. Sorry. <clears throat> wow, just so many songs do on cue. I tell you what, it's crazy. But that's really the big thing. You're going to read it over on MMORPG.com or MMO News. You're going to read it all over the place. And Okay, so it wasn't my best rendition, Raph. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My throat is a little dry. Let me get some Coke. Happy? I'll do better, I promise. <laughs> uh, but you're going to read a lot of news uh, coming out from Daybreak. And the one thing that this really does, it, of course, lit- it lights the fire for... Well, it's really going to light the fire uh, for a lot of the haters. Like, the haters, like, ha, they're going to literally come out of the woodworks. And I was like, oh, I told you so. They're nothing but cheaters, dog. They, they suck. They told... Man, you guys are wasting all your money. It's like, well, cool, dude. You're going to come out here, it's like rubbing it in our face, like Daybreak's in trouble, that's cool, but how about we take the real aspect of this, and these are people, these are their jobs. Yeah, we pay money for an entertainment, but that's also our choice to pay for that kind of entertainment. I mean, these guys are working to support themselves, to support their families. Being happy that someone got let go, go fuck yourself. I understand you do not like the company, I understand you don't like this person, I can't control your feelings, but please, in a public spectrum, show some decent, show some human decency, and just shut up. Don't got nothing nice to say. Don't say it all. 
That's a southern thing that everyone in the north needs to know as well. Now, of course, you're going to hear a lot of a, a lot of numbers as well. It's like, oh, a hundred people got fired from Daybreak. It's like, well, okay. Thank you for your nomenclature of a number, but you know, and like, oh, it's a trusted source. Like, cool, cool deal. Let's. I rather trust that trusted source, I guess, if they want to put their name on it. But you know, of course, that will hurt themselves. But you know, who cares? But if you hate Daybreak, if you hate DCO. Understandable. Go hate it. You'll find your own corner. I'm pretty sure there's a more popular podcast with much more views than me out there who do who that's a better job. Who no one ever knew what their names were. No one ever cared. Have fun with that little dream. But if you hate DCO, if you hate Daybreak, understandable. I mean, I'm not a big. I, I'm indifferent right now. I mean, I'm. I do find this a little bit weird. But I'm also not going to make a big, big thing about it and make a big hateful video. It's not, there's no point to that. And that's one of the things I really like about my videos is I am an optimistic person. I will look at the negative and, of course, again, artifacts and time capsules should have never happened. But I'm not going to go out of my way and foam at the mouth and say that these people suck, blah, blah, blah. People make mistakes. The paperwork that everybody has been looking at for Daybreak has Jason's name on it. Jason's been the owner. Uh, to me, I'm done. As the paperwork is done. It has his name, and I'm, I'm good to go. But for the people who still want to play, who are still playing DCO and are scared about this, it's okay to be scared. It is a little bit of unnervingness, and that's something I cannot give away, and that's something that you, as a player, are going to really have to deep down and decide if you want to continue supporting it or not. And that's one thing that, this, that these articles are really doing. It does hurt the player base for us. And true, it gives us the information that we technically kind of need to know to know at least where our money is going, who are we supporting. But at the same time, it does hurt our player base because we're going to possibly lose people. And that sucks. I mean, if if a company or if a news organization is going to report the negative, which, I mean, this is a negative report. I mean, there's no way to look at it. There's nothing positive about telling where a company is coming from. If you're going to report something negative and it's going to hurt our player base, then at the same time, there needs to be kind of an, an actual optimistic reporting to try and bring back our player base if, in fact, that negative report turned out to be false, turned out to be nothing but kind of a witch hunt kind of an ordeal. I mean, we're going to lose players. No doubt about it. We're probably going to lose them, and there's probably people going like, oh, that's the last draw. Not supporting this. I'm out while the outing's going. I'm jumping out the sinking ship. Those are going to have those people, and that's going to hurt our player base. So what are these news outlets going to do to bring back our player base? They're going to do nothing. And that sucks. It royally sucks. And hopefully we'll see a couple of those MMO sites going, you know what? Let's, and they'll try and work and try and actually do a, a positive thing and bring back some player base. We can only hope. But, you know, it's the internet. You'll never know. But in my opinion, right now, and I mean, as biased as, as you people want to call me, PR, Trex, whatever, I don't give a fuck. I'm looking to the people who still want to play the game and still have fun. It's still here. Doors are still open. If this was such a really big ordained deal, Warner Brothers and DC would have came down and put the kibosh on a lot of shit. And whether they're just silent because of whatever, then they're silent or whatever. I can't really stop that. But the game is still here. If you're wanting to, if you're wanting to play, pay, invest, or whatever you want to call it, go for it. Have fun. And just go out there and just enjoy a video game. It's for entertainment. Entertainment purposes. Where is the dev and the treks begin? <laughs> it's very true. It's very true. But I'm an optimistic guy. I stay in the optimistic because I have no reason to stay in the negative. If I, re if I stay in the negative, then why do I even play a video game? I, if I want to stay in the negative, I won't play video games and I'll stay in the real world where it's negative as shit and this place is horrible. I want to play my video game and have fun with you guys. And I do that. I have fun with it. So, good luck to Daybreak. Hopefully everything works out. Do all this hoopla, 
what's going on and can't wait to see what DCO and what Daybreak even comes back comes back out with. So, uh, anyone have any questions before we sign off? Nice little Q and A. Q and A. Yeah. Let's go do another screen. False Arwen Tyson. Nice. Hey there, Slump, how's it going? Hopefully they don't follow Marvel Heroes into the void. I agree, Lurker. I mean, that is my fear. That is my fear, is that we will end up just like Marvel Heroes and we'll, we'll be shut down. And, and honestly, for all the people who are really claiming, it's like, I hope DCO gets shut down. Why? Why would you want people to lose their jobs? Why would you want us as players to lose our enjoyment? Like, you're, you're worse than the pile of shit that apparently you want to live in. Don't bring us into your shit. Let us have fun outside of it. I don't... And, and even if I didn't like playing Marvel Heroes, that was still people with a job. That was still players who enjoyed the game. And it sucks for them, and it sucks for everyone around it. And, I mean, now we do have that fear. But at the same time, even before these articles about who owns Daybreak or whatever, every video game... Every MMO still has that fear. World of Warcraft could easily just shut down anytime they want. And it's just going to be the decision of the head honcho. It's like, alright, we don't want to do this anymore. It's like, wait, what? You don't want to do what? I mean, it will be the choice. And DCO can shut down anytime it wants. Anytime. And... That fear is, has been here since ye, since year one, since the game launched in 2011. I, I of course been playing the game since I, I mean, I've had that fear that we could shut down in a month, in three months, in a year. It can happen. So, I mean, just is this going to be another reason why? It will be closer to possibly shutting down. God, I hope not. I really do like it. Um, I am gonna play DCO. I gotta get into. I gotta get some stuff. Yeah. If Star Wars Galaxy taught you anything, it's that there's nothing to worry about. Nothing at all. Yeah, people. Yeah, people lost their jobs. Uh, it was a sad. It was a sad thing when I read. It. As soon as I heard the report. That daybreak has some layoffs. I went immediately to my friends uh, to the thing. It's like, what? What just happened? I went to a tackle shop last night that had my damn bait. Where's the tackle shop? <laughs> I don't know, Raph. I just don't know. Shut down. Well, yeah, yeah, I agree, Lurker. I was just using that as the, as the biggest example as possible. Like, even World of Warcraft, that's popular and how still in it really is. I mean, it can shut down as well. It could shut down anytime it wants to. Depending on how Overwatch the Overwatch League goes, like Blizzard can just go, we don't want to do that MMO anymore. Yeah, we're done. We're done. We'll we'll make like an R we'll we'll remake the RTS every every couple of years. We're good. We'll do what we want. Any other questions? Sorry, now my eyes actually fidgety. Ugh. I think I saw some folks talking earlier. I'm sorry, I wasn't able to get to it. Oh, Young Legend. Uh, my favorite power? Rage. I love Rage. <laughs> but you're a midi. <laughs> Virginia, you can have all the hugs. You just have to I you just have to get a passport and come on down, or I have to get a passport and go on up. I probably need to get a passport and go on up. That's probably what needs to happen. You need to get the hell out of here. <laughs> oh, Seuss. <laughs> Seuss will give you a hug, too. He's probably a lot closer. 
especially to Ontario. Trix, your personality in real life is the complete opposite of your favorite power. You have actually... My personality in real life is actually pretty close to rage. It, it actually kind of is. Um, I am an I am actually an angry person. There, there's a, there's a lot of see. I'm passive aggressive, and so my passive aggressiveness builds up. So I let things roll off really fat, really easily. But then I build it all up, and there's just going to be one thing that just triggers me, and I explode on whoever is in front of me. And it happens every couple of months. Why won't the devs make a hug emote? I don't know. Same reason why they probably won't do a selfie emote. I want my selfie stick in DCUO. Build it all up and forget to cancel Rage Crash. At that point, Arwen, I think in real, in real life, that would be me going to jail. Yeah, I did not cancel the Rage Crash, so I'm going to jail. Probably exactly what's going to happen. T. Oh, I wasn't even talking about like that, Raph. You mean. <laughs> Just yelling at people. He's a selfie stick weapon style. Oh my god. That would be amazing. Who do I have to Lunar Assault to get an m and m stream? Uh, Arwen, you're going to have to wait for CCF to return next Monday on the 7th. Ha ha. Character sheets are, done, are due by the 3rd, by the way, on Thursday. So, alright guys, that's going to be it for me. I'm going to go ahead and apparently get the sleep out of my eyes because apparently I'm sleepy. And we're going to stream a little bit of DC Universe Online because it is the last day for bonus for the bonus weekends for the crowns. And I want to get my thingies. I want to get my crowns. I want to figure out if I'm going to try and get my... I actually think I might get the, the OP collection. I might get that. Can we all have 2,000 points? No, Vagenda, but nice try, but you still get a hug. So thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to follow me on social media over on Facebook and the Twitter. And be sure to head over to youtube.com slash trickslight to hit the subscribe button. And here on Twitch, hit that follow or even subscribe as well. Much obliged. I will see you guys back in May at the end of the at the end of the month for the May wrap-up to see how Death of Superman worked out. I'm hoping for the best. It's open world. Everyone loves open world. Everyone loves the grind. The grind is amazing. I will see you guys later. Thank you guys so much for watching the podcast. And stay tuned because possibly there's going to be a new community DCO website coming up soon. Jazz hands. Jazz fingers. Yeah, yeah. Jazz fingers. Bye, guys. <laughs>